Hello, my name is David Emmanuel Noel. I'm uh, a co-director of OK Arts and Entertainment. We provide uh, support for artists uh, in promotion, uh, business development uh, and communications. Our flagship service would be our, our magazine, our online magazine, where we, we tend to do a lot of promotion of various uh, art disciplines, uh, artists' reviews, interviews and features. Oki Contemporary Arts is uh, an offshot of that in the sense that it's focusing primarily on, on visual artists such as Kerry. Uh, we're very proud and uh, privileged to, to have Kerry as one of our represented artists. Uh, so we're very proud and, and privileged and intrigued to, to know a little bit more about her work, uh, her approach to work, and um, what's next. So this is a, a platform, which I can say will be a, an informal platform, by which we can have a, a, a discussion and have a, a better overview of, of, of Kerry's practice. If we can leave any questions after the presentation, but if you're dying for uh, any particular question to be answered, by all means, just use the, the text messaging service here, and either myself or, or Kerry will, will, will look at that and, and answer accordingly. Um, so with little more to do, over to you, Kerry. Thank you, David. Thanks for the intro. And um, we, as we can see, that um, London in Different Dimensions is exhibited on Oki Contemporary Arts uh, platform. And I just wanted to say a few words about the London in Different Dimensions. It's um, a collection of art that I created over three years, from 2013 through to 2016. And um, I will take you through and explain each of the series um, as we go through the exhibition. So we can start off with um, the first one, David, thank you. This one is Trafalgar Church, and it's from a small series of uh, six paintings in the Love London set. And um, these were inspired by views of Trafalgar Square, um, kind of on the approach and just looking around and, and taking in the inspiration at the time. Okay, so throughout the um, walkthrough, we'll see the other five belonging to this collection. And then we move on, David, to City After Dark is the, the first of a series of six in the Inner City London collection. Um, and this one is of particular importance as it was the start of the London artwork. And um, this particular painting was inspired by me looking out of the window whilst waiting for it a lift in one of the London buildings and if you look carefully at this one you also can see the shard in the background but I am actually reflected within this painting when I was looking out the window and um, if you want to look carefully you'll be able to trace my outline if you start from the bottom right hand corner and move up through the image. So at your leisure it's good to kind of zoom in and look at the detail a little bit more closely um, and capture this kind of late winter view um, of London on the way home from work so to speak. And it just gave rise to other paintings in um, in London from from here on. Oh, can I can I ask in, in the um, perspective in which you're looking at the shard, which yeah. suggests it's a, a relatively tall building or height you're 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 looking um, at London from? Uh, can I ask which building you were were in at the time? Uh, it's an office building which is next door to the Museum of London on the Barbican. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Right. So it's quite high up. I would say it's about, it was about, say, uh, 10 flights of stairs, 10 flights up off the ground. Right. Right. It's quite, it was quite a remarkable view. Okay. Um, next. 
This is also from the Inner City London collection. Um, it's six paintings again in this collection. And this view is taken from the rooftop of One New Change. And it's looking at, directly at St Paul's Cathedral from that view. And um, has a little bit of, there's quite a few couple of embedded images in the uh, artwork. Um, and David, can, can you see them? Uh, I can see faces. Yeah. Um, both in the skyline uh, and also to the, I wouldn't say the centre, it's to the slightly centre left at the bottom, what looks like a tree, yeah. but equally looks like it's got a face in it. Yeah. I'll, I'll try and, and zoom yeah, in. That's zoom in. Nice. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's literally on the you know, bottom left of, of St Paul's. That's right. It's in the tree, just about right. to, um, a mouth, nose, and two eyes. Right. And there's another bigger face in the sky. And I'm actually fascinated by skies. And um, this comes across in, you know, all of um, my my London series. Um, and because I actually use ink, um, I'm able to layer and tone and use brush strokes to actually get the depth and the detail that you can see. And if David could try and zoom in again, um, you'll be able to capture some of that finer brushwork that's going on in the background. Mm. Yeah. So I'm trying to think what this this built building is uh, with the spire here on the left of of the tree, um, isn't that? It is a it's it's quite monumental on the ground and it's not that far from St Paul's Cathedral. I don't actually recall its name, unfortunately. Right. Okay. But it's real, it's not imagined. <laughs> oh no, I was gonna ask that. <laughs> <laughs> um so if we move over to the next one, we come to again one of the smaller uh, paintings in the London Love London series, which is Nelson's Column, and it's Nelson 16. Um, so one of the small, um, the small paintings I last created in the set. Um, and again, you can see kind of these are views are surrounding area from the surrounding area of Trafalgar Square. I believe this is actually on Trafalgar Square, but I was looking at it from a distance when I took my inspiration. Um, and this one sold to collector in the UK. All right. Uh, and and when you are, you know, walking around and being inspired in, um, by the sight sounds of, of London, do you? I mean, are you sketching at the same time? Do you photograph, or is it a, a case that you're what, what's your what, what your approach to sort of your methodology in terms of gathering that 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 information, um, gathering sketches and, and ideas? What how do what what is your your, your formula? Yeah, it's my iPhone. Um, as when I get that feeling, I just I take my iPhone up and I just take a series of photos. And right. it really, it's kind of it's captured in the moment. So. I get that feeling and I want to capture it and um, I just take a series of, of photos and and um, it could lead onto a painting or it, or not. So uh, yeah. this is one of those moments. And it was at a different time to the other Trafalgar Square uh, paintings. So. Right. And this one is of a favourite uh, part of London for me, Covent Garden, and it's in the Inner City London collection. Um, and this kind of captures a, a winter mood, you know, and it's coming up to Christmas, so there's a lot of people around. And um, if uh, you know Co Covent Garden, it's got the old character to it of cobblestone. So I actually really enjoyed recreating all of these cobbled stones on the ground um, here to, to, to reflect that. Um, 
and there's a market trader in the middle. So the Covent Garden is all about market as well. So you've got a few different traders operating there. And um, I've missed because it has got a lot of history and mystery. I embedded um, a head and shoulders in in this, looking into the Covent Garden. Could potentially be portrayed as a reflection of myself looking on into Covent Garden. But um, after I finished the painted, I also thought there was, I created a figure of a, a woman with a black coat and a hat, which could well have been me on that day, because it was the kind of, uh, the way I was dressed, you know, at the time. So that was interesting, that, that came into the painting. Um, mm -hmm. Now, if you, if you look at this sort of look down Covent Garden, the view is actually from the National Opera House, looking through. Yeah. Um, and did it, I just wonder if you could catch, if David if wanted to, can you see where the um, embedded images are? The embedded uh, yeah, I think it's to the, I think to the right. That's right, in the walls. In the wall, um, there's a profile of a, a, a large head woman yeah. looking looking on. Yeah. Uh, oh, I suspect looking at the bottom left hand corner, uh, there's a, a lone woman. Yes. Sort of observing. Coming up from uh, one of the one of the shops, as it were, um, uh, at the at, yeah market activity. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, just did. I mean, uh, you 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 haven't gone into too much detail in terms of the the figures, but it it, it kind of suggests, and maybe this is my own experience, and, and as you say, it's an area reaped in history, but mm -hmm. it reminds me of that sort of old Dickensian. Street uh, and even the the attire of I think the man who's in the very middle yeah suggests it, it's they're not dressed in modern day clothes but maybe that's just my perception um, <laughs> maybe it's a winter's night and they're all wearing you know, French yeah. coats but yeah, yeah. Uh, it was just kind of like I didn't want to go into too a you know, little bit of detail so that you can tell there were people but. Mm. Just, just enough. I wanted to keep that mystery. I wanted to keep that ancient feel. And when you look at the columns on on the right hand side, I kind of put cracks in them, and, mm. you know, to kind mm. of show that it's an aging area. Yeah, yeah. It does actually remind me that a few years ago, if I remember correctly, um, I think. Uh, the city, I don't know which borough it is now, um, but the the council wanted to um, completely repave um, Covent Garden and oh, get rid of the yeah. cobbles, and there was a lot of um, a lot of pushback on that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I think I'd be devastated if they did that, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, um, so I th then it, there's another the next. Uh, painting is also um, from Covent Garden, the same time of year, probably the same, you know, the same kind of day that I took the inspiration. And um, this captures like the Christmas bunting that's hanging, the lights and um, the famous London taxi in, in, in shot. And um, it was, it was, even though it was a winter's day, there was a beautiful sky that day. And I remember I accidentally, when I was taking my reference shots, I caught movement. And I thought, wow, you know, that kind of inspired me to create a moving image so that I also captured the hustle and bustle of the day, the busyness of the day. Um, this has been a real people favourite, this one. And it was the last one in the, sex, the set of six. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Um, okay, on, on to the next one. I'm introducing you to a set of four London landscapes. And these are away from central London and they're more around the area near where I live. Um, and this one, when I, when I launched this on social media and Twitter, got such a reaction. Um, people ha thought it was a Van Gogh and like looked again. And there was one sort of series of comments that dubbed me like Van gogh <laughs> at the time. And um, a few, you know, but it, this wasn't the only painting that has been sort of compared to sort of the Van Gogh style. Um, and what I need to kind of sort of show in here, uh, point out is that the detail of the ground, a lot of people think it was wood chip, you know, like wood chip bark. But if you look closely at it, it's actually the veins of the trees and the roots going beneath the ground. And all of this energy connects. Mm. Or if you follow any particular line and spend hours looking at this, everything you know the energy will flow right through the painting i'm mm. so passionate about creating something meaningful and um deeper so this kind of goes into the depths of like a vision a creative vision that just doesn't stay on the surface mm. um i think now particularly with nature and with kind of experiencing COVID times and around the world, a lot of us have looked to nature to find comfort and um, being outside, outdoors in parks and such just brings so much um, oh. comfort to our souls that I just hope that I can do the same through my art, of, through the landscapes of, you know, nature, through my art. Oh. In this there's, there's a lot of energy I'm, I'm, I'm getting from this, this image particularly. And I don't know whether or not, again, it's because, of the, as you say, the, the trees are all connected, they're alive. They, they sort of, um, for me, look like veins of a, of a, of a living creature, um, which is the world. And as you say, because of the you know, circumstances we're in, um, and on top of that, you know, the, the climate change, environment the issues that we're facing, um, it, it's, it just resonates. Mm. Right. And they kind of like the energy flows and it's, mm. it's, it's fast moving. And people um, who, who know my work, and there's a lot of energy. And when people were visiting the show in London back in 2018, they were energized. And, you know, I witnessed like how energized that they were from actually seeing the work. And then there were times when they would like go to the end of the frames to like look, and it was as though they were waiting to see something like coming off the page. It was you know a remarkable experience um, mm. to see that happening. Um, and with it, it's the energy comes with the energy captured in my work is is made possible by working with ink. I don't think I could capture this energy in a different medium because I work with ink, it's fast drying, and I can layer with ink without a bleed, so the actual colours don't bleed into one another. Mm. Mm. And it allows me to create all these different layers. Have you have you tried um extensively in other mediums uh, or is it just that this is something that you naturally fall a full uh, lean towards in terms of just having that 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 bond that connect with that particular medium you use um it, it happened naturally but i have tried oils a long time ago back in the um early 80s i painted with some oils on paper um, and it was just a long process. The drying process was taking far too long. And it was a different technique with those. It was more about capturing texture, still with a similar sort of linear flow of the brushwork to get that texture and that linear look. Mm. Um, and so when I came to start working with ink again, I wanted to pick a clean me. 
clean way of painting, <laughs> something that didn't have the um, the smell of of the oils. And I didn't particularly get on with watercolour. I just found it this just wasn't really for for me. You know, the the colours would bleed, and it wasn't really some a medium I was happy in working with. So I tried ink and I experimented with ink. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've seen anyone using the way that I have. I haven't come across anyone that does that. Yeah. Yeah. So we then now go on to, we're uh, back to a bit of London. And this was a small painting from the um, Love London series of Big Ben, um, which sold. Um, a couple of years back now um, to a collector in London and it was a view taken off a bus. I was traveling through central London on a bus. It was a lovely summer's day and I was just like clicking away at pictures in Westminster <laughs> as I was coming through on the bus. So this is one of them. And then we're going off again to Trafalgar Square which is another one that features Big Ben um, in the distance um, there on the left and it's a view taken from sort of across the square on that one. And then we are coming, the next one, David, is another beautiful painting, um, significant painting from the Inner City London collection. Um, and this is the shard, the, the hero in here is the shard, and the energy around the shard. Mm -hmm. And this was inspired from like overlooking the Thames from the Millennium Bridge. So the actual bridge that you can see there is the uh, Southwark Bridge, and then further down is uh, the shard, the city end of London, um, and, and the um, South Bank. Now, if you go, if you follow the line of the bridge off to the end of the painting on the left, you can just get a glimpse of the Tower Tower Bridge at that end. And um, um, the Thames is also a fascinating area. You know, it's fascinating. I'm always like love. The bridges and love looking into the Thames and um, I just also feel that a lot of people like doing that and a lot of people would like to sort of stand there and and think and reflect so I'm reflecting in the water here and there is an image reflecting in the water I don't know if you can see it it's not obvious at first you do really need to search to find it, but there is um, there, there is a uh, seems to be a, a larger a larger than average line on to the, the at the bottom uh, the bottom right. I can oh, kind of right. um, yeah. There. Yeah. There it um, is. Yeah. But I could also see faces or or something in the sky. So. Um, also. I mean, again, pictures like this, and, and this is the, the magic of art, is that yeah. you know, people perceive and, and see things differently. Um, they do. Uh, yeah. Um, there are lots of faces that I can pick up. Yeah, they do. People can see, you know, can picture and see, you know, you can even see birds if you look. Um, and these, these are all natural, you know, when you're in, a creative flow that natural things happen naturally and uh, instinctively. Yeah. And and the lady who bought this painting, she she's a UK collector. So far, I think all my original art is sold in the in the UK. I've had prints um, that are sold worldwide. Um, but all well, the originals are in being sold in the UK. She actually connected. She had a connection with this one particularly because she met her husband. And you know, these are the areas along the embankment to the to the right of the picture. Um, yeah. The area, you know, the places that they would go um, together. So it had a significance. 
and sometimes some you know you need to establish that connection with the art mm -hmm. whether it's a personal connection or an emotional connection mm -hmm. yeah. okay and then where are we going next we're coming into another dreamlike um landscape uh this uh the hero on 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 this one is a remarkable old oak tree that's on a roadside on a green. So, I mean, it, it's just simply a beautiful tree. And, um, I'll, you know, whenever I go past there, I'll spend time looking at it. Um, and there is, there are, in reality, there's um, tree, other trees, there's cars, there's road, there's, I've obscured that and just, he wrote the tree in this one. And um, which which part of London is this? This is Cotfosters Road. Cotfosters Those, Road. Yeah, it's a main. It's like a big sort of. It's a big A road. What they call an A road that leads onto the motorway. Right. The M25. So yeah, quite a busy area. It's quite a cosmopolitan area as well because it's got nice nice restaurants and cafes. So you, you don't see any of that in here. I've kind of like, if anything, I've melted, <laughs> I've melted everything down and it's all yeah. just like flowing. And you see the roots, the old thick roots of the tree coming beneath the ground there. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the beauty of an imaginative brain. <laughs> <laughs> um, and... Um, this one is another from uh, the, the landscapes. This is from the same park, Grovelands, as London in Attention. And this park's just got a beautiful lake in the middle and it's surrounded with, you know, wildlife and didn't actually capture any wildlife at the time, but um, there's um, loads of old trees. Um, you get all this beautiful hedging as well. So. Um, I had a lot of fun with this and it's called translucent grounds because again kind of follow the energy beneath the ground and kind of see what's there in terms of the energy and um, mm. veins of the tree or the roots of the tree let's call them the veins because they like comes brings it to life mm -hmm. um, and the water and everything around it seems to be dancing because I was actually dancing at the time without painting it. <laughs> and um, I, was, I loved painting to the Gypsy Kings or Spanish, like Spanish uh, beats. So I, you can tell that there's a lot of happy brush strokes in this painting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And do you, do you normally paint whilst listening to, to music? Uh, most of the time, I'd say 95% of the time there's music playing when I paint. Mm -hmm. And it'll be music to reflect the mood, you know. And I paint, I'm quite an emotional painter, so I paint depending on my mood. So if I had to sit and paint something today and mm -hmm. had a piece of paper in front of me and some inks, I would actually paint reflecting my mood at the time. So, I mean, so far we've looked at um, some of your, uh, your your city cityscape um, images, as well as you know um, your, your trees and natural wildlife environment. Do you do you um, is that also a reflection of the type of music you're you're listening to at the time to influence what you what you produce? Um, at the time, so it was not the the. The moments of inspiration, there wouldn't be any music playing. Right. Like, say when I'm when I was out and about capturing the 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 reference, you know, if I was out and about and I saw something, I was like, right, you know, I was in that inspirational mood and I took my reference shots from around the area. I wouldn't be listening to music at that time. Yeah. I wouldn't listen to music when I'm doing my outlines because I always I start from my outlines so I put my main outlines so like my hero outlines in place so I would you know in this case it would have been sort of the main part of the tree the main mm. planes um, mm. and then everything else then it's outlined in black ink to make it permanent 
Right. And then I would shade and then I come back to do the black detail. And I like to do the black detail. It's it's kind of my signature style. So it's, um, it may seem to darken the image, but I, as you can see, there's different tones. So the darker, obviously, the darker the mood, the lighter, the more joyful the mood. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this this is from the Trafalgar Square Love London series, and this is looking on the approach to Trafalgar Square. So you can see the National Gallery there on the left, and St Martin's Church on the right. And I'm still fascinated by old London historic London, since they still have the old traditional lamps um, just in the centre, mm. and. Um, you can just about see the Canadian flags that are flying on, on the building, the Canada House, which is on the approach to Trafalgar Square, Pall mm. Mall. So um, quite an interesting little bit of detail there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then where are we off to? Oh, okay, we're now back to St Paul's and we're back to, to the Inner City London Collection. Now, um, this one is quite uh, um, a weird, I'd say, quite a weird reflection of the sky. It's almost like the scream, if you know the scream, mm. where you have all the waves. Mm. And um, St. Paul's is a fascinating building. And this view of St. Paul's is from the ground looking up because the other, other, features of St Paul's are from high up looking at, at it like almost on the same level but this is looking up from the ground and I had some inspiration here from a friend in conversation we were talking about the area and we're talking about churches and stuff and um, I included some worshipers you know which rejoicing in the walls there if you could go right in the center be below the dome you know, if you'll see them there's one two three four five six yeah yeah, right there. yeah. Um, in that the little people actually on the top of saint paul's are statues so it's just kind of my my take on their statues and not they're real they exist, and it's just me putting them in, um, interpreting them in my style there. Yeah. I, I get the impression St Paul's um, <laughs> is uh, one of your favourite, if not the favourite um, uh, building in London. Uh, yeah. um, how much um, research have you done on the building, and how much of that reflect in, your, in, in the images you produce of it? I mean, the statues, for example, have you... Have you investigated further in, in terms of the history or, or what they represent, who they are? No, um, I haven't gone into that that to the detail as to who they are. But I, I've been around this building for over ten years, and um, I'm always in awe of it from whichever angle I look at it. I've never actually even been inside. There's something I'd love to do because you can go inside and go up to the top um, mm. and there's uh, people galleries and I think they're probably at the top where those the, at the top of the columns where there's a, a viewing gallery. Mm. And um, why do I love this building so much, David? Because I don't, you know, necessarily I go to this part of London just to see St. Paul's, do I? Um, I love this building so much because I work, you know, my work is quite close to St. Paul's. And for me, it's almost like an escapism. So on my, you know, on my break, when I take my walks, um, I just kind of feel like it. It, it kind of is uplifting, it uplifts my soul with whatever the weather. I can walk yeah. around there, walk in its gardens, look at it and just always feel like, wow, you know, because yeah. it is monumental and it's quite a large, large building. Yeah. Um, I once um, called it the guardian of the Thames because for me, you know, 
if you're along the Thames and you're looking down at the Thames, the Set Force is there. And I kind of, you know, always thought of it. It's, it looks after London. That's the feeling that I get. And, um, yeah, that features quite a lot in this collection. Oh, and this is Trafalgar Square. And um, this I didn't appreciate at the time was a temporary place. And it was called the Gift Horse. And it was gifted by the Mayor of London at the time to the fourth plinth. And it was a controversial statue, don't you think? And people either loved it or hated it. It was almost like a, a skeleton of a horse, wasn't it? And it had it had one of those electronic tags on it for some reason. It kind of, I can't remember what it was. It was like one of these, these watches that we wear all the time now to sort of measure our heartbeats and our steps. It seemed that that was on its ankle. And um, I um, I was fascinated by it, so I took a picture and it, it sold. Didn't you know? I'm I'm not surprised that this particular one sold because um, it it was seen in a gallery by Trafalgar Square. The person who probably bought it, I don't know who they are, but um, had a connection, knew that this was not going to be there forever, and. Um, mm. and, and and purchased that. So um, I'm not quite sure what's in the background, but I can see that there's a clock on that building. There's some probably some sort of church in the distance there. Um, yeah, so that's a bit of history captured in my art. Where are we now? And this is um, the Monumental National Gallery on Trafalgar Square. This is a part of it, so not all of it. And it features one of the, the historic lampposts in, in the picture. And it's sort of the banner, not not clearly. Didn't I don't always like to capture things exactly as they are. I want to give enough people to recognise a building, but I don't want to kind of capture it as it is. I want to give it that magic um, mm. style. Um of, of mine and um, I really do love the National Gallery and it's one of my favourite art galleries to, to visit over the years mm. and has some classic old paintings of El Greco's particularly that I like in there and um, some of the other um, impressionist art in there um, mm. that I like, yeah, so that's good, it's captured a bit of London history. Yeah. Again, um, from my inspiration, uh, and and this is probably the last, I think, the last of the landscapes in the, the exhibition. This is kind of there's there's loads of parks near where I live, and this is um this is one of the quite a nice park. But it's not one of those parks where it's, how can I say, it's more down to earth. It's real, you know, it's, it's up hilly. It's not, it's, it's not sort of flat and... Not man-made. Yeah, not too well maintained. Mm. And it's, it's quite a natural park. And um, I was driving past it and I just, I stopped the car. <laughs> I parked the car by the gates and I went in and I said, oh, let me go and have a look. And it was quite empty and quite eerie at the time and it was windy. And I, well, I saw the trees leaning and I thought, wow. And I, I took the pictures and I looked down the path and I thought, hmm, I'm just wondering whether to do that or not. I'm on my own. I decided not to. So this kind of is a, a mysterious landscape that can yeah. lead you into into the woods, so to speak. And um, there's even I've just spotted a face in there as well, and the top towards the top in on the right hand side in there. So yeah, so I took what I needed and I ran out. <laughs> I left. <laughs> 
it, it, it kind of lends itself to a, a C.S. Lewis novel or, you know, some form of fantasy adventure where you, you don't know what's behind the trees. Yeah. And it'll probably take you ages to come back out. Um, yeah. <laughs> it yeah. does have that feel, feel for sure. Mm. And, and this was the other one that um, somebody described once that it was um, like, like Van Gogh from another dimension because, mm. you know, I did call it landscaping dimensions because it does give you that alternative uh, view of, of, of a landscape in a dreamlike way, yeah. dreamlike mysterious style. And the, the paper, it's got that kind of warm light to it. You know, it's got that yellow because it's not quite white. It's china white, and it's got the like a warmth glow to it. This paper that I use for the landscapes, and that yeah. comes through on this one. Yeah. yeah. So we are then coming back to Trafalgar Square, and this one is the last of the six Trafalgar Square ones, plus the two smaller. Um, Small ones of Big Ben and Nelson, so it's eight altogether in the small paintings. Um, this when I I took the inspiration from across Trafalgar Square. I didn't then go up to the statue to study it or take a picture of the statue and who it was. And I called it Churchill. And this is quite really, I don't think it's true. This isn't Churchill at all. It's somebody else completely. So this is my illusion of Churchill, <laughs> quite a controversial painting. But I, um, I, you know, it's. I think that when we do something and we call it something and we create something, and if, it, if this felt like Church, Churchill to me at the time, then that's what it is to me. So yeah. I, I would not go back to change the name because it's inaccurate on this particular case. It's Winston Churchill's cousin, so it's still a Churchill. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever it is, <laughs> uh, I, I did think there could be somebody that it was, but it was a long name, so I did. Well, if, if, for those for those watching, um, and obviously this is recorded, um, it, it's a, an enticement for those uh, visitors to London to go and see who this statue really is. Exactly. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, great and um, because of my love of skies I also created a series of four uh, skyscapes so the skyscapes uh, feature a top of the building and I, I am drawn to, to statues on top of buildings for some reason so um, these are of the other side of St Paul's and it was a clear blue day. And think, what can you see in the sky on a clear blue day on top of St. Paul's? And I just felt that there was a spiritual moment. So I created a, a, a web of spirituality coming off of these statues. If you follow the lines that you can see that they, it's almost like the statues are spinning out, you know, yeah. into the sky here. So that's one of them. And I think that the the, to the next one the next one yeah is a, from the same series. Um, this is the BT Tower. Just about see the little the red BT on on the top there. Mm. Um, and I have had quite an association with BT over the years. I used to work for them and then I got a job with the company that actually uh, bought their the, the BT portfolio. So I'm very close to BT. So for me, it was quite significant to capture this mon land, land or monument, what do you call it? Landmark. Yeah. A landmark, that's it. A landmark um, in my artwork that had some kind of bearings onto my into my life as well. So, um, and I was lucky enough to to get a, a VIP visit up to the top of the tower there, um, mm. probably about six seven years ago now. Yeah, that's that it's, one. it's it's one of I think two modern or relatively modern buildings featured in your 
in your, in, in your exhibition, that and the shard. Yeah. So um, uh, maybe this is a, a sort of side question, but your appreciation of of um, iconic buildings or, or of London seem to be more of the classical or at least historical nature, more so than modern contemporary architecture. Uh, would, uh, would I be right in saying that? I think so, and um, and of significance. So, like the Shard is a significant landmark in London, and and the BT Tower is a significant landmark in London. Now, the BT Tower in 2018 was um, celebrated its 50th year, so it's only 50. Um, it's not that old a building. It was oh. celebrated 50 in 2018. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's now a listed building, so yeah. Oh well, yeah. So hopefully, it's there to stay forever. Or if it's listed, so. And this is another kind of uh, a historical building, isn't it? It's the Victorian Albert Museum in mm. South Kensington or Kensington, um, and the if you know. The building I'm talking about, I think the Vic Victoria and Albert, are, it's probably Albert and then Victoria are on their thrones at the top of the the, the building, and I just like honed in on one of the corners mm. of the building, and it's with the history comes a lot of energy, old um, spirit. I I look into the sky. And as a, as a spiritual thing, um, can I explain it? Lots of energy, lots of faces again. Yeah, you look into the sky. So, what do what do we look at when we want? When we look into the sky, we're looking to see. And I think also for for many of us who have who've lost loved ones, we kind of do look up. Sometimes we look up. Because we kind of feel like their energy and their spirits live on around us and mm. but far away from us, not not close to us. That's how I uh, my interpretation. Um, and in this particular painting, I've made it obvious that the sky has a lot of spirit because the faces are not as discreet; they are quite obvious in there. And they surround in the, the statue of, say, Albert or Victoria, which one it, which one it is, I can't remember now. Um, and um, you can sit there counting them forever, really. Mm -hmm. one, of, one of my followers absolutely loves this painting. And he, he finds so much joy in it because he feels like the faces are smiling at him. Mm. So, and anyone could sort of interpret it in their own way. Yeah, well, as well as the faces, there's so much detail in that. I mean, look at the building, the facade, and the, the lining. Everything seems to be, whilst it may not be, uh, uh, with respect, the most of you know extravagant of your paintings, and, and you know, uh, in terms of detail, it, it is one of the most detailed, as far as I as I see. When you look at the building, when you look at the the depth, and then look at the colouring, and then on top of that, the faces. There's lots of lots of layering in this image. Yeah, yeah. And the next one is even more so shaded, and this is um, the this spire is on the top of a building called the Atkinson Building, which is in London, all in Bond Street. And people who know Bond Street, so far up in Bond Street is Tiffany's. So standing outside Tiffany's, um, about seven years ago now. So looking up onto this spire, thinking, wow, this is like in the middle of central London on a modern historical building, but quite, um, you know, an old part of town. And mm. Again, you know, it's a, it's a web of energy in the sky. The faces in this one are discreet, but they're there. They are in there. You just need to find them. And I think what I really was fascinated with this spire was the herringbone on 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 it on the spire. Mm. The design. 
Um, there's a bit of gold on the on the real spire. There's a bit of gold, but it doesn't quite. It, it is there on the original, but it doesn't quite pick it up on um, on a small detailed web picture. Right. Right. There is a little bit of gold in in there on the original. I don't know. We're going to split it up. Yeah. Just about, just about see a little bit of colour in there. How long did this this particular um, painting take you? Um, it was seven years ago. Yeah, the picture uh -huh. was taken seven years ago. I actually remember the day because it was my daughter's eighteen. Uh, right. So, we went to Tiffany's. <laughs> we went and we sport her. We had a family outing at, at Tiffany's in at Bond Street. They were absolutely amazing in there. They really they had the champagne out, and we we had that. We were uplifted, had that uplifted feeling. So when we left there and we were walking the streets of London, it was just quite um, nice. It was a nice day to capture nice uh, moments and. So for me, this this is kind of a symbolic. Mm. Mm -hmm. It br brings back a, a memory, a specific memory for me. Mm. And finally, um, this is the Change City view, and this has to be the only painting that I went back. And I went back and I went back and I took videos, I did sketches, um, I, then I did like still shots of all the different buildings um, to get my, my outlines, you know, my main outlines and get my perspective. Mm -hmm. So this has to be the most technical of my paintings. And... Um, for those who actually know the view from the roof, the one new change rooftop where the famous Madison restaurant is, they'll they'll stand there and they'll see St. Paul's right in front, the hero St. Paul's. But to actually see the shard, you have to turn around. You have to do this. It's not in a straight line. You do have to turn. So my main challenge was how do I get that? And to, you know, try to keep the perspective to some degree, but keep it on a, on a level. Cause I didn't want to create this. It doesn't, it didn't feel right to create that kind of, uh, panoramic picture. Um, so I, I had all my A4 printouts glued, you know, pinned yeah. on the wall and, to get my outline. I think it actually took me two days to draw. Right. And drawing is not a favourite of mine. I do it. I can draw, obviously, but um, it's not my favourite part of the process. I actually enjoy the painting part of the process. So I'd like to get my outlines down as quickly as possible. Mm. And then the rest is kind of like free, free flow. Yeah. yeah. So this has been quite popular with people. Um, much love painting. And if um you kind of there are other sort of landmarks in there. There's the London Eye that you can see in that's slightly to the left of St. Paul's down. Just about yeah. see half of the London Eye. Yep, there it is. The London Eye. Um, there's another building that we. And is that is that viewable? Is that viewable from? Yeah. It is right. Okay. It is, yeah, it's clearer. It's actually a clearer view of it. But when you actually, you know, when you're looking at things through on, on this scale, you can't, you know, rep it's not represented larger than that because it's right. quite far in in the distance. Sure. Um, but there are other. There's that building which I don't know which it is. With the three dials on the top in the city. Oh, the, the wind turbines, yes. Uh, that's yeah. uh, Elton Castle area, isn't it? That's right. That's right. And yeah. 
there's another building that's quite domed to when you come to the left of that that's another sort of city one of the city buildings probably financial right. building there um and um the, the spire here which i don't need to find out what that's called but that's in that's on the ground sort of not far from st paul's so yeah. next time i'm in london i'll go and have a look at that um okay. yeah Oh. Some of it's made up to feel, but I, I try to keep the ones that stood out the most in oh. in the perspective. And then there'll be bit little bits and pieces that are kind of little bit made up on in between. And I don't know if you can see, but you need if you look through the glass railing, you can still see detail. Really? Yeah, yeah, that's one. I think for me, that's one of the um, my favourite things about this this image: the the, the detail the, through the glass. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's funny you say that you you've kind of picked up you know iconic buildings that represent the London landscape. And um, my first impression when seeing this was that um, that the, the the bottom part was actually the Millennium Bridge. Um, so I know it wasn't necessarily in perspective mm. anyway, but I always I thought that that you were making your own sort of account of what yeah. what for you represents that yeah. part of London. Yeah. So the Millennium Bridge, if you see where the railing is um, here in, so you've got St Paul's and you come where the, where the railing goes a little bit like that. So the Millennium Bridge is actually on the ground behind those buildings. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's not far yeah. from it. And the bits that reflecting through the railing to the uh, west side of the picture, that's roof. That's just like the rooftop of the shopping centre. Just didn't right. know anything about that. It's there, so I left it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fascinating. Yeah, I, I I will have to pay a pay a visit next time I'm in in central London. Um, I'll uh, I'll go and have a look and capture the moment you were taking those those snaps and getting the inspiration. So thank you for that. That's okay. Thank you very much. And that's the uh, the last um, of the paintings in the exhibition. Because we're going to um, share the uh, talk, um, others could appreciate the detail and the commentary behind each of the artworks.